everybody, it's me, Lindsay, with Equip Me OT, here today to talk about how to take a shower, get cleaned up following a knee replacement or knee surgery. It's a really common issue. A lot of folks feel like they can just jump right into their shower following their surgery and they struggle. So I wanna kind of show some of the things that can make the process much easier right off the bat. So let's talk about some supplies I like to have on hand for those first few showers following a knee replacement. And this would really qualify for a single knee replacement or a double knee replacement. The supplies would be roughly the same. So I strongly recommend having your mobility aid of choice nearby and in the bathroom if it fits, whether that's a walker or a single point cane or a, a wide base quad cane, having something on hand that you can use to stabilize is a really good idea. In some situations, I also recommend a leg lifter. Simple leg lifter can be used to get the leg in and out of the tub if it's particularly heavy and awkward for you to manage. Some folks don't need it and can just use their hands and I'll show both techniques. Another thing that I strongly recommend having on hand is something to cover the incision. Now, you will likely come home from the hospital with a waterproof covering over the incision. That's to protect it, um, to keep the uh, staples covered, and that's going to really keep most of the water out, but I still often will add a little press and seal over the incision um, and over that covering for those initial showers just to keep everything as dry as possible. So you're really not supposed to soak that incision for several weeks following your surgery. Now, once that covering comes off, you're gonna still want to cover the incision with some press and seal or similar product. Usually what works best is a little press and seal over the area and then some paper tape or something similar to hold it in place. Especially if you're going to be sitting and standing because that joint will flex in that process and you wanna make sure everything stays relatively covered. It doesn't have to be perfectly dry, but the doctor really doesn't want it getting soaked immediately following surgery or when that wounds, those wounds are still kind of open. Really can't get the incision completely soaked until after all the scabs have healed and the area is completely closed up. So make sure you're doing what you need to do to cover that incision. And some doctors will even send you home with the necessary covering supplies to keep that incision dry. All right, the next thing I recommend is having um, some the things in the shower. So a long handled scrub brush like this um, can work really well. This is a silicone based product uh, that is great for reaching down low so that you don't have to bend and flex the knee beyond where you're comfortable doing. This is really great early on. It's also just really helpful to have on hand to help extend your reach. This one's really cool because it does bend so that you can reach whatever area on your body you're trying to get to. And from a seated position, that can be challenging. So that brings me to my next product, which is some sort of seat. Not every situation is going to call for this type of tub transfer bench. My shower here is very deep. It's a big step in and out. And for safety reasons, I would always recommend having a transfer bench, which we're gonna stick out slightly from the shower to give you that extra security for a seated level transfer, which I will go over in a second. I'm also going to demonstrate the alternative, which is a just a standard shower seat that rests entirely inside the shower. Um, and that is going to have a slightly different transfer technique. And I will talk about that in a minute. The biggest thing about having a seat is recognizing that early on in the process, even if your mobility is pretty good and you're weight bearing and you're moving around, taking a shower is an incredibly exhausting process and having something to sit on, to rest, to make sure that you're safe because I've had many scenarios where individuals are doing really well. They'll take a shower fully standing with no seating option. They'll get woozy and lightheaded in the shower and nearly faint, which can be extremely dangerous. It can be um, bad for your surgical recovery and just can cause a lot of problems. So having a chair ready for those first few weeks of recovery, while you're more painful, you've recently had major blood loss from the surgery, it's just a really, really good idea. So strongly recommend having one of those on hand. So let me show you how I would set it up with the tub transfer bench. So I already have my walker here as if I have approached the shower. So we're gonna pretend like, let's say my left knee was replaced. This technique will work for either, but we're gonna pretend like this is my replaced knee. And I'm gonna back up to my tub transfer bench just like this till I feel it on the backs of my legs. And then I'm gonna reach back and sit down. Now I'm assuming that this is a fairly fresh surgery in this case, and I'm gonna kind of be cautious about how I bend and flex and straighten that leg, given it's going to be uncomfortable. I would have the leg covered. I'd be fully undressed at this point. Um, I have a lot of folks I recommend getting undressed in their bedroom, coming into the bathroom with a robe, finishing the process and going back to the bedroom to dress. It's just a lot easier that way. You're gonna need to push the walker out of the way, depending on how the bathroom is arranged. You could use your leg lifter now. So again, if my left knee was replaced, 
I might hook the leg lifter under my leg, and this is just gonna give me an easier place to grab and hold, and it takes some of that hang pressure off my knee. So I'm gonna kinda slide around on the bench here, and that's why I had to push the walker out of the way, because I don't wanna clip it with my ankle, or my heel. And I'm gonna slide myself over, and I'm going to lift the leg in. If I was doing it with the right knee replaced, I would simply lift that leg in and slide over. This is going to be really quite simple and again, didn't take a lot of effort or movement at the knee. So when I'm early in that recovery process, this is gonna be more comfortable. We'll close the curtain as if we had one here. I'll link to a video on how to keep your floors dry if you have this set up in a shower curtain. Um, and then I have a nice low shower head here because I have a handheld shower head. Strongly recommend having this option if you're going to be seated for your shower. If not, at this opportunity, you really could stand up and complete a pretty normal shower because theoretically your knee is fully repaired and at this point you can stand, complete your bathing process. Um, and then when you're ready to be done, sit back down. You're gonna use your leg lifter again if you want to. If not, this is how I would do it without the leg lifter. I would simply slide to the edge. I would use my hands to lift that leg up over the edge. Again, this is a really tall, deep tub. I'm gonna slide around, keep sliding, use my hand as needed, lift my other leg over. I would get dry, put on my robe, dab this area dry. Remember, when you remove the covering and expose the, if this is an exposed incision or even the covered incision, do not rub with the towel, simply pat. Pat dry the incision. There is probably gonna be some moisture, it's okay. They don't want it soaked, they're okay with it getting a little bit wet. It's a good time to kind of evaluate if your incision is open, give it some fresh air, let it dry fully before recovering that, if that is what your doctor has recommended. Okay, now I'm gonna show you how to do this with a shower seat. All right, so as promised, here's a regular shower chair. This is a setup that I would recommend in situations where perhaps it's a walk-in shower um, that does not have a tub edge to contend with, or it's a relatively low-edged tub, or the individual doing the transfer is a little farther along in their recovery, or their recovery is going a little faster, whether that's due to a higher fitness level, or they just are doing really well and don't need that extra help from the tub transfer bench. So that's something that you need to kind of evaluate with yourself and a therapist that you might be working with in this process. So this is how I would do the tub seat transfer. Now again, I'd wanna make sure I have the tub seat set to an appropriate height prior to setting this up. One of the best things you can do for yourself is test what is a good height for you on these shower seats before putting it in there. Cause you can set this to whatever height is comfortable for you. So make sure it's tall enough that it's easy to get up and down from that seated position because you have that flexibility. So take advantage of it. So I have it set to my height, which I like, and I'm gonna set it kind of far back in the tub. I always wanna get it as far away from the controls as possible so that I can have my leg a little bit more room to be able to be flexed or extended depending on what my comfort is. Everybody's a little bit different in their recovery process and at different points they can do more mobility with it than others. Okay, let's go ahead and get into the tub. We're going to pretend for this very first one that it, again, my left knee has been replaced and it is the right leg that is going to be my strong or non-surgically repaired leg. Now you can do this with a bilateral knee replacement just like this, but again, I would probably go with the tub transfer bench. Okay, so if I'm gonna go in, I'm gonna lead into the tub with my right leg, so my non-surgically repaired leg. I'm gonna lead in with this, because it requires the most flexibility. And at this point, I can grab, I can kind of grab the wall, I can grab here. I have a grab bar, which I strongly recommend everybody have, but you can reach back for your shower seat and you can sit. Now, I have something annoying here in that my shower has glass doors. So I have this awkward rail here. That's not super common, but if you find yourself in that situation, just be aware that that rail can be uncomfortable behind the knee. So I'm already seated here, so now I can kind of guide my leg, the left leg, over and in to complete my shower, just as I had described prior. You can do it seated, you can do it standing, you can do it in a combination of effect, whatever is most comfortable for you. So now to get out with the left leg, being the recovery leg, being the surgical leg, I'm going to stand up from my seat here, and I'm going to again exit the shower leading with my right. So the left leg is my surgical leg, I'm gonna get out with the right. Now I can use the seat here as a bit of a stabilizing force, 
since I need to lead out with that side and I don't really have anything to grab. I would wanna have kind of my walker somewhere nearby here because it's a good idea to have something to hold on to as I now have to bring this other leg precariously out behind me, okay? And off I go to finish drying and getting done with the cleaning process. Let's switch it around. I'm gonna do it as if my right leg is the surgical recovery leg. Same thing, that you gotta remember, going in, you're gonna lead with your left. So now I have to use the seat and my um, walker, just as I did to get out before, to lead that left leg in. And here I have, it's precarious, because now I have to kind of guide this leg over without really having much to grab onto. Again, this is why in a tub scenario, I love the transfer bench. But for reasons of flexibility, you could then turn and sit. Now to get out, it's gonna be much easier with a right knee recovery with this arrangement. Because now I can just stand up, I can use the wall for support, step out with that side, grab here, guide the right one out. Okay, so that's basically the setup for a tub seat. Again, for a little bit uh, lower level recovery, so somebody who maybe doesn't have any other physical needs, um, this is okay. And also, if you have this deep of a tub, please consider using a tub transfer bench. I can't say enough that this would be a challenge for many folks, especially early on in their recovery. So I'd love to hear your comments, your thoughts, your questions down below. If you need more information like this on how to stay safe and independent in your home and community, consider subscribing to Equip Me OT. Thank you.